My dear friends, today I'd like to describe a very effective technique in the management of Mogagnian cataracts. This is a 60-year-old female patient who presented with a Mogagnian cataract. She had speckled calcific spots on the anterior capsule, a liquefied cortex, and a small dense amorphous leathery mobile nucleus. Let's see how I managed this case. A little bit of tripen blue is introduced into the anterior chamber to adequately stain the anterior capsule. The clear corneal incision is well constructed. The main pressure point in this case is to successfully complete the capsular rexus as well as manage the hard nucleus. This is not an intumescent cataract, it's just a cataract in which the cortex is completely liquefied and we do not have to use cohesive viscoelastics, simple methyl cellulose will do. So after puncturing the capsule, it's important to clear up the area of the liquid cortex by injecting viscoelastic. Because there is no support for the capsular rexus to be performed with a 26 gauge cystitome, it's important to have a good utrata forceps to complete the capsular rexus. This is because the nucleus is small and hard and does not act as a counter-traction board on which you can perform the needle capsular rexus. The capsular rexus should be done very carefully taking into account the small calcific spots and the fibrotic areas in the anterior capsule. You see that in this case I am insufflating the anterior chamber repeatedly many times with viscoelastic before I can successfully complete the capsular rexus. Hydrodissection is not needed, but the reason why I use a jet of fluid is to wash off the liquid cortex. Now this is a very important instrument that uh, I am using. This is known as a blunt chopper. It has a blunt end at the tip and a cutting edge on the inner side. It looks similar to a ball dialer. So after impaling the nucleus with the bevel down position and you see the ease with which it helps to crack the nucleus. I am able to get a crack that has gone almost through and through. If you do a direct chop it is going to be difficult because in these leathery cataracts the lens lamellae are tightly packed together and it is very difficult to do a direct chop because in direct chop we use a shear force. So the message I want to give here is uh, when you have these leathery cataracts which are small you always try to do a horizontal chop using a blunt chopper like this or even a ball dialer. I am not pressing too hard to separate the nuclear fragments because they still seem to be connected in the center. This is because there is hardly any cortical or epinucleus cushion. The posterior capsule is just behind and the bag is completely empty except for the small nucleus and therefore if I suddenly lose my occlusion, the posterior capsule can just rise up and I can have a posterior capsular end. Which is why I am picking my way through very carefully and very cautiously without attempting too large a lateral separation. But in spite of this, using this blunt chopper, I am in good control of the entire procedure. So once I have made small enough fragments, even though they seem to be connected, it is still possible to emulsify these fragments safely within the central portion or within the safe zone. Every step that you take or every move that you make should be done with care and caution because inadvertent use of FACO power will cause damage to the posterior capsule.
So you wait for the nuclear fragments to follow the phaco tip. You wait for occlusion to happen gently and only then you apply small bursts of phaco power to emulsify the nucleus. These hard leathery mogagnian cataracts have been bothering me for quite some time now because even though I am predominantly a direct phaco chop surgeon, I find it very difficult to chop these very hard lenses. And the horizontal chop, especially using a blunt chopper, has completely made my life very easy. Even though I can see strands of cortex in the periphery, I desist from trying to remove them at this stage. Because I know the zonules are weak, the posterior capsule is probably thin and inadvertently engaging them is going to create zonular dialysis or a posterior capsular rent. So I first implant the intraocular lens, in this case it's a hydrophilic lens and once this lens is in the bag, it will help to stretch the equator of the bag. And this will give me a level of protection while I remove the small bits of remaining cortical remnants. So after the viscoelastic is completely washed out of the eye, well the case is satisfactorily concluded. So once again I use a butt compression technique to seal the clear corneal incision because I can see small amount of stromal haze around the incision. So this was the first post-operative day slit lamp photographs of the patient. The patient had an unaided visual acuity of 612, me improving to 69, and the cornea was crystal clear. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>